Hello everyone, this lecture is an introduction to Python programming. I'm Xin Huang, a PhD student from Dr. Isi Luo's lab at Northern Arizona University. First of all, why do we need to learn Python? After learning Python, you are able to read and revise the code in the practice sessions. You also acquire the ability to modify the code and apply it to your own research in the future. Besides, Python is one of the most popular programming languages because it is easy to learn and use. Python code is similar to human language. We only need to prepare a Python file and an interpreter will do whatever written in this file. Similar to English, Python is another formal language comprising vocabulary and a set of grammar rules to instruct computers. The vocabulary in English is word. For Python, the vocabulary we are going to learn is variable, or operand, and operators. Besides, we also need to learn the rules in using these uh, variables and operators, just like English grammar. To help you remember the rules, I will present lots of code examples from the Python files we are going to use in the first four units. The goals for today's lecture are to get a very basic idea of the vocabulary and the grammar in Python language. We are not going to become an expert in programming, but to be fully prepared for the following practice sessions. This lecture can also be used as a help document, which you can refer to whenever you have troubles in Python programming. The topics to be covered today can be divided into two sections. The first section, we will start from the very basic coding rules and then learn how to find the Python files in the training package couple train. We will also learn simple variables and operators. With problems become complex, the code we write will become long and messy. To keep the program clear and efficient, we will learn some advanced vocabulary. They are derived from the simple ones. The grammar rules will also be introduced. Because time is limited, this lecture will only cover the knowledge required for this training course. If you want to learn more, please feel free to refer, please feel free to, refer to the learning materials listed, listed at the end. The code in each line except the annotations is called an expression. It is a unit of a Python program. Annotations starts with a pound sum and will not be executed. In a Python file, an expression like this one indicates the start of a Python program no matter where it occurs in the source code. One common expression is to bind a variable name to a value. Later, we are able to retrieve values using the variable names. In this case, we can retrieve the value 0 0.72 by this variable name. It's flexible to rebind the variable name to another value. Like here, this variable name is now rebound with a value of 3. Another common expression is to print on the screen. Here is to print the last value in a two-dimensional variable res. Last but not least, Python code is organized by structure, space, or indentation. Generally, after a new column, we need to add four more spaces at the beginning of expressions. The right level of indentation is important. Too much or too little space will induce an error. In this training course, we will use a Python package called Carbon Tree for most practices. More detailed introduction of Carbon Tree is available in the next lecture. Our Python source code is embedded, and, and Carbon Tree provides an interface to read the code like this button. We can also open the source code in the file folder. All Python codes store in a file named source code. 
Now we will learn the vocabulary of Python from the very basic level. The primitive var uh, variables in Python has six types. Three are for numerical values, one is for character values, one is for boolean values, the other true or false. The final one is special because it only has one value, which is none. The very basic operator is binary operators to perform calculations with two variables. They could be numerical operators such as sum and division or logical operators for boolean variables. Another basic operator is about the control flow. This is to decide which and how expressions are executed. Here are two control flows, branching and loops. Branching is also called an if-else control flow. For example, if tomorrow is sunny, I'll go hiking. Here, if sunny is a condition expression with boolean values. If the condition expression satisfies true, a set of expressions will be executed. Here is go hiking. The other side of expressions, stay at home, will be ignored. Similarly, if the condition expression is false, we will execute stay at home and ignore the other one. As we learned before, expression after the colon have to be intended to one level. Here expressions after if and else um, keywords are at the same level of indentation, and this indentation level is below the if and else. This grammar rule uh, will also appear in many other definitions we will learn later. Loop is an indentation control flow. For, in for instance, repeat taking medicine every four hours until you feel better. Here the condition expression is feel better. Loop is to repeat the action until the condition expression reaches true. There are two ways to realize a loop control flow. The exam uh, example here is to print numbers from 0 to 9. While loop is to run the code block until the condition expression satisfies true. Notice the variable in the condition expression should be changed, changed in the code block each time. Here the example, t equal, uh, the variable t increases by 1 in each iteration. For loop is to sequentially select each element from a collection. Here the collection is um, from 0 to 9 and uh, execute the code block until all elements in the collection are retrieved. Notice range 10 will return numbers from 0 to 9 without 10. A break keyword is to break the loop regardless of the condition expression. So far, we have learned the basic vocabularies and coding grammars in Python language. Now we are going to learn advanced variables and operators. There are collections of basic ones. The first advanced variables is list. It, it is used frequently in this training course. List uses square bracket in definition. It is able to contain mixed variable types. Here is a list incorporating numerical value, string value, and even new list. The elements in, in a list is ordered. Therefore, we are, only, we are able to index elements starting from zero. Here is to select the first element. We can also select a continuous part of a list through slicing. Notice in slicing, the final index will not be included. So here it is to select the elements with index 0 and index 1. Notice the slicing operator will always return a new list. The last three examples are pretty common in practice, such as guiding the lines of a list, inserting or removing elements. I'll introduce the rest of three advanced variables briefly. The second one is tuple. 
Compared to list, tuple uses parentheses in definition. Another difference is elements in tuple are unchangeable. So expression like this one will induce an error. The third advanced variable is dict. The elements in dict are indexed by key rather than by order number. Keys, keys in, in dict are unique and unchangeable. For example, we can retrieve the value to 2020 by the key of year. The fourth variable is site. Its definition uses a um, curly bracket similar to dict. The elements in site are unordered, thus they can't be retrieved by index. The expression like this one will induce error. The elements in a site are unique, like this case. As an advanced operator, a function is a, a, the collection of operators. It can be illustrated as a black box. We only need to take care of the input and output. One feature of function is that the code block in the function is reusable. For example, to decide why the four numbers are even uh, or odd, using simple operators, we have to repeat the first four lines many times for different numbers. If we want to evaluate 100 numbers, we have to write 400 lines of code. But even our function enables reusing the code. To use the function, we only need to specify the input value. This slide is to describe the syntax of function definition from general model Python file. The definition starts with df keyword. The function name is designed by your own. The value of inputs need to be assigned when the function is called. The expression with return keyword is to return outputs to the upper program, which calls this function. If there are no return values, this, uh, this expression is to stop execution of the function. The code inside a function will not be executed until this function is called. The upper program calling a function can be another function, the Python main program, or even terminal. The expression to call function is a function name combined with input values, like this example. With more functions defined, the code will become long and messy. We need to organize them in a way to keep code clean and effective, such as which functions should be called by which functions, how does the data flow through the whole program. As we learned earlier, a code line like this one indicates the start of program execution. This code block is called the main program. In this case, the main program calls function 1 and function 2, and function 2 further calls function 3. The variables in function 1, function 2, and the main program have the same names, A, B, C. So how to distinguish them? Python uses namespace. Namespace is an isolated scope where variables are valid. So function 1 and function 2 has have local namespaces and the name and the main program has a global namespace as well. The ABC variables can have different values in different uh, namespaces. But if you want to change variables in global namespaces, you need to clarify its global pro property by the global keyword before you use it. Class is a mixture of variables and function, which are also called attributes. For example, human class has variable attributes like eyes, mouth, and hands, and function attributes such as walk and eat. Python allows creating multiple object instances from the same class. For example, American, Asian, and African are all objects from the human class. Like function, we need to define the class before using it. Here is a syntax of class definition. 
the parameter base class base class name is the parent class. For example, the parent class of human class is animal, rather than plant. Most expressions in a class definition are function definitions. Here is an example of general model class definition. All functions have a same parameter named self. The self keyword represents the object itself. When creating an object, Python will call a specific function named init. Here is a code example to initiate a journal model object. The six parameters will be passed into the init function here. The syntax to assign attributes of a class ob object is the object name attached by the attribute name, such as um, the code example here in line 48. Module is a file containing reusable variables and functions, different from class which supports instantiation of multiple objects and modification of attributes. Module is a static storage of the attributes. Like namespace, code in one file is not visible to other files. To make it visible, we need to load the module file firstly using import keyword. Here are three ways. One way is to load the module directly with its default name. Later, we can retrieve its functions or variables inside the module by its default name. The other way is to load the module and assign a new name to it. In this case, we name the NumPy module with a new name NP. The third way is to specify what should be uh, imported. This way avoids to import everything inside the module and saves computer memory in the runtime. Um, here, this example, here this example is to import the class defined in other Python file named uh, journal module. Here I will introduce some modules in the first four practices sessions. The first one is NumPy, which offers comprehensive mathematical functions working on arrays. For example, creating, cre creating a zero array multiplication, uh, matrix multiplication, and matrix inversion, and so on. Pandas is to manipulate tabular data as a two-dimensional data structure, such as like writing the data to a CSV file. SciPy module is to solve scientific and mathematic problems. In this training course, we will use a specific function solve IVP to solve ordinary dif differential equations with initial values, ODE in short. Specifically, is to find the solution of y given the division dy dt, which is a function of y and the initial value y0. In the following unit 2, we can find the metric representation is to solve an ODE problem of a matrix X. To solve ODE, solve IVP function requires four inputs as shown below. Here are some examples from the general module Python file. The solve IVP function is called in the line 26 and the deviation function dx divided by dt is a right-hand equation defined in line 69. The final module is matplotlib for plotting purpose. These code examples are from test p2 Python file. Finally, if you want to learn more about, the, about Python programming, you can refer to the following learning resources. And don't forget, you can always use Google for whatever errors you encountered. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about programming, please feel free to ask me or any instructors. 
Hope you all can enjoy your fruitful training time. Thank you.